Hello and welcome to more Vintage Cube. Today we're playing the LSV Cube. My voice is going, so I'm gonna take this pick and then take a break. We're gonna take, uh, what are we looking at? Inquisition, Black Leaf Cliffs, Atris, and Sahili Rai. Um, I think Inquisition helps us stay open. I haven't looked at the cube list at all. And I'm guessing if LSV made it, there's a bunch of like combos and nonsense and fun stuff. I'm guessing like Sahili Cat. So disrupting your opponent seems important. We'll just take Inquisition um, and see what's in pack two. Well, we get past the Thoughtseize. That's a good sign. There's Fiery Confluence, Worm Coil Engine. I don't want to take Worm Coil. Uh, Spell Pierce, I like quite a bit. Balance is an unbelievably strong card, but I think I'm just going to start by taking two of these early discard spells, and I'm going to go try and fix my voice. All right, we're back for pack three. My voice is not coming back, but that's okay. I figured this is better than not making any content for you guys. I'll just talk a little softer. Um, so I haven't been making videos. I mean, I haven't necessarily been able to talk so good, and there's a bunch of issues, but hopefully I'll have it sorted out. Uh, in a little while. In this pack, what do we have? Ugin, ooh, Anamatu's Augury in Vintage Cube. That seems like a lot of fun. Also, Eldamri's Call just seems great. Like, especially with Niv-Mizzet, you can call for Niv-Mizzet and just start going deep. Fracture is interesting. Artifact Enchantment or Planeswalker. That kills a lot of things. We could have actually, like, got the Sahili Rai combo with Felidar Guardian. Uh, Falcon Wrath Aristocrat is interesting. Maybe there's, like, a sacrifice theme in this cube. We could play it safe and take him as Merrick Fiend. We can go a bit bigger and take Recurring Nightmare and try and go like Reanimator potentially. Um, I kind of like the Fiend just to cut red. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of reanimation strategies in general. <laughs> Mizix's Mastery is in here. <laughs> Are there ultimatums? Probably not. It's probably just like Anamatu's Augury. I think I'm the only one who wants ultimatums in Vintage Cube. If we had taken Recurring Nightmare, we could take Faithless Looting or... Like a Gilded Goose, maybe Green Black Recurring Nightmare is pretty good. Uh, Finger of Destiny, Lingering Souls is a good pickup. I could like kind of move into Black White. I could just take Hero's Downfall, but I think this card's pretty mediocre. Like even in Mono Black, if that's what I end up in, I don't love this card. It's just a bit expensive for the effect. Like you really want to be doing this on two mana. It is. I guess it's fine, and we can just cut Black super hard. But Lingering Souls is really good. I'm gonna take Lingering Souls. I think that card's. Definitely valuable enough. Wow. All right, we get a fifth pick, Umazawa's Jite. I do like that. Vryn Wingmare, Oust. Temple Garden, Valky. Valky's sweet. Tendrils of Agony, of course. Uh, what is this? Four mana, one, one. Can't be countered indestructible. Okay, super interactive design. And attacks each combat if able. And then whatever creature control deals combat, you draw a card. That seems good. It's like an Edric that you can't stop, but it's kind of weird that there's like an indestructible squirrel. I don't know. I'm going to take the GTA though. This card's, this card's unbelievably strong. Um, here we have Armageddon, Ember Cleave, Shrine Burning Rage, Hanger Back, Leon, and Relic Order, and then some lands too. Um, I don't think I want to take the Relic Order. It's slightly expensive. Or like, Double White is not necessarily what you, where you want to be when you started with Inquisition Thoughtseize. There's Metamorphose if we wanted to go Storm. Um, I do love Geddon, but I, I don't actually love Geddon. It's fine. Um, it seems maybe better in LSV's cube if he has big things like Anamachi's Augury. There's like more nonsense you want to stop by playing Armageddon, but maybe like the overall curve is lower. Hangerback Walker is very conservative, but I think having at least one of these effects is pretty nice. Wow, Mind Twist? I mean, this card's not as good as people say it is. Like, it's not an auto win, but it's still a really good card. And getting the seventh pick, I mean, what? <laughs> what is this seventh pick Mind Twist doing? We're in the right colors. For sure. Um, I would love to take up Blood Crypt, Goblin, Rabble Master. Honestly, even Remand, like, if we could make our way to get into blue-black, would be excellent. Seeing Remand go that late is kind of strange. Well, there's a Smuggler's Copter. That card is unbelievably strong. So, Copter, Kenrith is not great here. Koth, like, there's some red cards, but Copter is colorless, and it, it's going to go in any deck, and it's good with, like, GTA, Mesmeric Fiend-type things. So I'm not too sad about that. I might want to take a Black Leaf Cliffs now, because... Red looks open. We have a Shield Breaker and Fire Blast. Um, Fire Blast is not necessarily what we would want in this deck, but uh, Black Red is a very sweet archetype. And like, Sahili Rai can maybe wheel Felidar Guardian, but that's, that's a big ask. I think I'm just going to take the Black Leaf Cliffs. Now we have a choice. What is Worm Coil Engine doing in the pack still? <laughs> what is happening in this draft? I could take a Braid, Mistress Factory, or Worm Coil. Um, a Braid keeps us open to go Black Red with Black Leaf Cliffs. Worm Coil is just fine i guess like it's gonna be played in any deck i think i'm gonna take a braid i really would like to go black red Ooh, 
Here's the decision now. Falcon Rather Aristocrat versus Fracture. Uh, I have Lingering Souls. I don't think Armageddon is necessarily something I want. Aristocrat is fine. Flying Haste, Sacrifice stuff. Sure, I'll take the Aristocrat. It's a card I have never played with in Vintage Cube. And yeah, Black Red. Okay, we correctly identified the open lane. Uh, here, I think I do take Figure of Destiny because you don't want small creatures to go with GTA Copter and things like that. Um, so there's that. We have Wear Tear, Oust, and Light Up the Stage. I don't normally love Light Up the Stage. I'm actually a big fan of Oust, but I guess I'll take it. Okay, yeah, red is open. Embercleave versus Shrine. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to take Shrine. I don't know what's better. Goblin Rebel Master is good too. I'm going to be honest. The most biggest reason I took Shrine is because it's a splash color. Or at least right now, red is a splash color. So it's easier to like play Shrine on turn two for two mana. I've never actually cast the card Embercleave, and that could be part of my, uh, you know, misunderstanding of the card. Like, maybe once I play the card, it's, like, absurd. But I, I'm learning as I'm playing it. I, I, maybe I'll see someone play Embercleave against me and destroy me. But for now, I'm pretty happy taking Shrine here because uh, we can cast it turn one off Mana Crypt. Uh, there's a running Registor, a Bitter Blossom, Beaumont Courier. Like, this pack is going to have something busted for us. So let's just take Mana Crypt and see what the future brings. Hmm... Lightning Bolt? I mean, we're like pretty heavily just red now. I think we took a couple good black cards and then red was just so unbelievably open. I don't think I'm playing these white cards. Um, that, yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to say no to a Bolt. There's Duretti, uh, Brain Maggot, and Chupacabra. I like them, but I think Bolt is too important for a deck like this. We'll just take Lightning Bolt. It's a Burst Lightning. Ooh, All Suns Dawn. That's a fun one. I like a lot of the inclusions I'm seeing in this cube. I haven't noticed too many like out there inclusions. I guess Skyclave Shade is kind of fun too. Two mana, three one, can't block and it can get bigger and come back. I mean that seems pretty good in this deck. I'll probably take it on the wheel but I'm trying to pick up all this burn because it's possible we just end up in mono red like if someone ends up taking all of our black cards. So we're just kind of preparing for that. Um, Groom Lava Mancer, Skull Clamp. Is this a Skull Clamp deck? We do potentially have access to Lingering Souls but I have no color fixing for that. Uh, Goblin Rabble Master Skull Clamp is interesting. I guess I'll take it and then just see what I can wheel. There's also a Grave Titan if we do want to go like have some bigger black cards. I do have Mana Crypt to cast a Grave Titan pretty quickly. But I think we'll try a Skull Clamp. I don't normally love it, but there is a Bitter Blossom that might come around. Ooh, Colgon's Command. Also Sulfuric Vortex. Jeez. <laughs> we have a decision to make. Um, because I have Inquisition Thoughtseize, I think I would rather move into red. Or, uh, Black red, it's more fun. It, it, like, it's something you don't get to draft as often as mono red. <laughs> also, the cat chariot. I think this card is worth playing just because the artwork is so cool. Um, but K Command Vortex, yeah, I think I'm going to take this. There's a chance Vortex comes around as well because it seems like nobody else is touching red. But I, I just want to draft the archetype that, yes, he included bonus round. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> um, I just want to like touch the archetypes that you get to draft less because I, I draft to have fun and this is more fun for me. Honestly, this is looking like a decent young Pyromancer deck. Snuff Out is also an absurd card, but our black is still, like I said, very low. It is free. I have no sideboard cards right now. Snuff Out's so good. But because we have Skull Clamp, we have Thoughtseize, Inquisition, Burst Lightning, Lightning Bolt, Abrade, like, this is actually a really good young Pyromancer deck. So I think I'm just going to pick that up. What is this? Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, ooh. Okay, 3 mana 3 2 whenever you cast spells, it's like the black young pyromancer. So we can go red black pyromancer. Honestly, I'm just going to try it. I don't even know if it's good. I think Heartless Act might be the better pickup here, but how often do you get two young pyromancers in your deck? All right, in this pack we have Swift Spear Duress Firebolt. Um Duress really helps with the removal, but I think I want to take Swift Spear. We don't have too many one drop creatures and we have a lot of non-creature spells, so Swift Spear is just great. Um, we do wield Beaumont Courier, Revoker, and Rotting Regisaur. So all fairly decent cards. I kind of like the Beaumont Courier given the way my deck is shaping up. Like, at the very least, you can Skull Clamp it. Although I love Phyrexian Revoker. I'm not playing these white cards. Um, yeah, I think actually I'm going to take Revoker because I have Mana Crypt. Is that true? <laughs> is that what I want? No, we'll take Beaumont. We have a lot of good turn one plays with this. There's Brain Maggot, Ravages of War, Goblin Welder. Potentially a Chupacabra, although it is double black. And that makes the mana hard, but we already want black mana early for Thoughtseize Inquisition. So I could see running it. Like, I'm not playing the Welder. The other option is Brain Maggot and just have all the disruption. 
I think I'm gonna take the Chupacabra though. I don't have many fours and getting a little bit more top end is good. Skycleave Shade is pretty good with Skull Clamp as well. Um, I like Massacre Worm. Dismember is pretty nice, but I have quite a good bit of early removal. I'll take the Shade. It also goes well with like Falcon Wrath and Aristocrat and stuff. Ooh, Grim Lava Mancer Wheel, nice. And Vortex came around. That is uh, definitely something. And we get Agadim's Awakening, okay. We get a whole nother pack, don't we? <laughs> All right, sometimes you draft black red. I think there was another draft very recently where I drafted black red and I got like literally every single pick was for my deck. This time there's two that I didn't. Uh, I'm not going to end up playing, but this is a very, very good start. <gasps> yes! Yes! <laughs> he put black red. Oh, I'm so proud of LSV. This is the dream. I finally get to play with my dream card. It's actually, we do have mana crypt too. So we can turn two black braids. Okay, well. Um, I could like try and wheel black braids because nobody's taking anything, but I'm, I'm not going to take the risk. Braids is just so sick for this deck. I don't even know if it's necessarily good, like given the mana, because braids is at her best when you can cast her pretty reliably early. And right now we're, well, let me see. I cut this. You know, maybe we are just an even split between black and red. Like if I don't end up playing Sulfuric Vortex, it's not like crazy. Okay, I guess we'll see. Um, Char... Burning Rune Demon. What? Six mana six six. Search a library for exactly two cards with different names. Opponent puts one card in your hand and one to your graveyard. Interesting. It's like a gifts ungiven for two, kind of. We can take Watery Grave with the hopes that we get a fetch land to turn this into a black red duel. Because the only other option is Char or Ancient Grudge. I think honestly our mana is so bad that I'm just gonna kind of speculate on the dual lands working out for us. Because that seems pretty important. The Triome, Lane Swamp Forest doesn't really help unless again we get a fetch. Uh, P and Kirin is good. Belgad Recovery is fun. There's a Wasteland if we want to be disruptive that way. That does make our mana worse too. Normally I would say you just take the Wasteland, but it kind of hurts here. We could take Ancient Tomb and then we have a lot of good early plays, but our colorless mana, like we don't have too many good ways to take advantage of colorless mana, except I guess Skull Clamp, which is a pretty good one. Um, there's also sort of Feast and Famine to a lesser extent. I'm just going to take Ancient Tomb and just hope that our mana works out. Like, I will take any fixing we can possibly get. We just haven't seen it. There's a Glorybringer. That's a, that's a good top end. This is like the deck of all cards I love. I'm just fully tormented by the fact that I might not be able to cast any of them. Island Mountain Plains is not the colors. <laughs> this hurts. I could take a Bone Crusher. Honestly, this wouldn't be the worst Birthing Pod deck either, but... I think Bone Crusher Giant's too good to pass up. It just does everything. Um, there's a Knight's Whisper in the pack too. Crucible if we had taken Wasteland, but Bone Crusher is another spell. Yeah, I don't think we're getting any fixing for our colors. So we may have to make some hard decisions in the future. Um, given the makeup of our deck, we could take Sorcerer's Spyglass. We have a lot of like Mana Crypt Ancient Tomb for specifically cards that are two colorless mana or easier to cast. Otherwise, Midnight Reaper Imperial Recruiter can grab... Braids, Young Pyromancer, Mesmeric Fiend, Goblin Rabble Master. Uh, I might not... Well, actually, I'll, I'll probably play Avalanche Riders given this. So I kind of like that. There's also Midnight Reaper, which is non-token dies. I mean, we can really go deep with Skull Clamp Midnight Reaper. Okay, I'll try that. Come on, deck. Uh, <laughs> Detsugu second right. <laughs> I love this card. So if they have exactly 10 life, it kills them or does 10 damage. It's a sweet card. It seems more for uh, in-paper play when it's like more for fun. But either way, it's kind of cool. Liliana's Triumph for us. Otherwise, there's Belfall Strix, but I don't think we're going to have the mana for anything. We'll just take the Triumph. Come on, deck. Black Red Land. Okay, wait, does that work? No, wait. I don't think that actually helps us. No, we don't have a Black Red Duel. Uh, okay, um, I'm probably just going to take Shatter Skull Smashing then. And this is the last pack we're going to see. I don't think we're wheeling any other dual lands. It, it's unfortunate it didn't work with Watery Grave. Um, but this is just like an upgrade to our mana base. So I guess I take this. Right, Marshall Lots. Blackleaf Cliffs, you cannot fetch. Yeah, that hurts. But it is what it is. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest mana value. That's not bad, but Hazard's actually pretty good in this deck too. We have so many ways to cheat her out. Um, just having her in our deck makes our mulligans really good. Uh, here's a Char. Clean Swamp Forest doesn't really help. I guess I'll take a Bone Shredder for the sideboard. Or main deck even, I don't know. Smiting Helix is okay. Yeah, 
all the fixing was just not for us. We even wielded a Knight's Whisper. Like, what? <laughs> how much more open can your colors be? Last pick. This card seems relatively unplayable to me, but it does seem fun, which is why I said it's probably good in, uh, like, in-person play, just because the stories you get to tell of, like, I hit him with Hidetsu second right is pretty awesome. On Magic Online Cube, it just seems... When you're not really, like, interacting with your opponents, the sweetness of the, like, winning with that card is kind of mitigated by the fact that your opponent's probably just going to rage quit, and then, you know, that's the extent of it. Whereas in person, like, you do it, like, call the whole table over and be like, look, I killed him with this card, and it'd be a lot more fun. So that, that's my critique on that card. It still seems sweet, though. Like, I love the card in general. Um, hard deck? Uh, <laughs> it's just hard on the mana. Our mana is actually awful. But we have a lot of card draw, so maybe we can find a way to get through it. I mean, we have so many. I don't think I can afford Sulfuric Vortex. Basically, my game plan is to avoid as many double-costed cards as possible. Am I ever casting Agadim's Awakening? I mean, if I do, it's going to be good. And I'm going to be the aggressor. It's, we just have to hope to not play against another burn deck. Which is kind of the downside, again, of uh, League Drafting. Is like... We know that nobody else was going aggro because white, red, and black were all wheeling. People were fighting over green. Um, but that's not necessarily the case in league drafting because someone else could like have drafted this deck earlier on and then we'd still play against them. Um, do I play Ancient Tomb? That's the real question. It's very good with Beaumont Courier, Skull Clamp, Jite, Smuggler's Copter, and Shrine. Um, it's pretty good with like Goblin Rabble Master, Sedgemore Witch, Hazaret. I don't think I'm... I have Mana Crypt, but I guess I'll get rid of Ravenous Chupacabra because it's double-costed. I probably should get rid of Black Braids, but that, like, hurts me too much. And she's so good in the deck that I'll just have to accept that probably the colored mana is not going to work out for her. I think I'm going to cut Figure of Destiny because, I again, like, colored mana early is going to be an issue. I like Grim Lava Mancer. It seems good with what I have going on. Um, I guess maybe I do cut Ancient Tomb and Shrine. Because I'm like, Shrine's really good when you're mono red. I'm playing two colors, so it's not as great. Um, I'm going to look at the deck a bit and come back. There's so many cuts to make, and I'm not... It's going to take me forever to get through these, so I'll be back. All right, I'm back. I made the cuts, and I have some very sad news. I don't think I'm main decking Black Braids. Um, first of all, I just have so many absurd cards, but the biggest reason I'm not main decking this cards is she is so good when you can cast her reliably on, like, turn three or four, or two. Two, three, or four, she's, like, absurd. But if your mana's not good enough to cast her reliably, uh, you're just not going to have as good of a time with Black Braids. And basically, we are playing only single colored costed cards, except for Glorybringer, which comes down on five. And the difference between like Glorybringer and Braids is like, if you're in a top decking war where everyone has like seven lands in play and you top deck Braids, she's not going to be that impactful. Your opponent just sacrifices a land and you have a four mana two two. She's really good early. Glorybringer's good in the later game and that's when he's easier to cast because we can get double red then so like casting Glorybringer on turn seven when everyone's top decking is like exactly where you want to be so i know I, I said this card's great and it should be in cube i still think it should be just we don't have the fixing we didn't see anything besides black leaf clips and i took this card absurdly high too i took it over like a lot of good playables so if we had the fixing i'd play black raids um we're playing 24 spells 16 land i think seems fine I'm not sure about playing Agadim's Awakening. We have so much things that damage ourselves between like uh, Knight's Whisper, Mana Crypt, Shadow Skull Smashing and whatnot. But I'm just going to try it and see what happens. We're just going to have a lot of sideboarding for other aggressive matchups. And we do have some good sideboarding to make just in general. We have like Avalanche Riders, Char, Sulfuric Vortex, Shrine, if we want to go like more burn heavy and things like that. The old 6-6 six, six mana base seems kind of perfect to me. So right now we have 6, 7... Eight of each color like our mana is not good but you know what <laughs> this is this is what it is we're just gonna see what happens see you guys round one. Oh right we're playing against stenophilia uh we are going first going first with this deck seems great why are my cards so tiny there we go uh we can again th this is why our mana is sketchy uh we have a turn one thought sees if we draw a red source then our hand is quite good i think i'm going to keep this because we also have a lot of like early black or colorless cards we can draw. And then we can hit them with turn one Thoughtseize and hope for the best. I don't know. Maybe this is a bit loose. Oh boy. Blightsteel Colossus, Chrome Mox, Heartless Act, Knight's Whisper, Seething Song. So 
I think I just take Knight's Whisper. They can Heartless Act the first creature that I play. But Knight's Whisper, like, their hand is really sketchy. And I don't know. They look like a combo deck. So disrupting their card draw seems worth it for me. I can hold open their hand here. They probably lead on Dark Slick Shores. Yep. All right, deck. Red. Oh, perfect. So I guess we are just going to play a Grim Lava Mancer and see if they just snap Heartless Act that. It, against their deck, they're playing Blightsteel Colossus. Um, it doesn't seem too likely that I should be scared of the damage I'm going to do to myself from Agadim's Awakening. Ooh, Shadow Skull Smashing. Okay, now, now I might be doing some damage to myself. Let's just attack them for one and see if they Heartless Act the Lava Mancer. I don't want to play Goblin Rebel Master just yet. Because if I played, they just instantly kill it. Okay, they're just taking it. Um, let's play this untapped. Play Sedgemore Witch. So they, they did correctly. They got her on Heartless Act. But this effectively counts as like a lightning bolt to the face if they kill it. But they don't. So this is an opponent I will almost certainly side in Black Braids against. Their deck seems a bit dubious in terms of what's going on. I'm guessing they have like Through the Breach Blightsteel Colossus maybe. I know four of the six cards in their hand. Ooh, Mind Twist is quite helpful here. So I can just Mind Twist them for three. That seems pretty good given what I know about their hand. Um, I have done more damage to myself than I have to them by a significant margin. But let's force them to kill stuff. We get our Pest, which is nice. So if they kill Sedgemore Witch in response, like that's great because we get our 1-1 one, one Pest. And then they take three damage here. Yeah, this worked out really nicely. All right, what do they discard? So Heartless Act is gone, Seething Song is gone, and Blightsteel Colossus discarded and then reshuffled. So we know they have Chromox and one unknown. We hit them for one. Next turn, we can play Hazard if we draw a land. If we draw like a spell, we can play Goblin Ravel Master. Now they hit the red mana, which kind of hurts for them. Ooh, Knight's Whisper. Let's get greedy and try and Knight's Whisper into a land here. Nice, we can go land, Ravel Man. Hit our opponent for a whole bunch of damage. And the beautiful thing here is that uh, even if they do have a Wrath, we just get to follow up with Hazard. And that, like, that's quite good. Skull Clamp would be an excellent draw. Their opponent has Chrome Box, one unknown, five mana. Let's see what they can do. Wow, Swiss Spear two. So let's lead with Hazard. See what happens there. That just resolves. Um, I think I'm going to keep the Swift Spear in hand and just Grim Lava Mancer them. Seems like the one way I lose is them doing something like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows what they could do with one card, like Cryptic Command. Okay, so this seems like a pretty good Braids matchup. They're all on, like, just playing lands and nothing else. Same with Avalanche Riders. I don't think I need Bone Shredder, and I don't love a Braid. It's just a bit, like, reactive. Agadim's Awaken, or Shatter Skull Smashing, like, I don't know. Their deck looks... Pretty bad, I guess, so <laughs> I don't think I need that. Um, if they have a like mass removal, maybe Agadim's Awakening could be useful, but I don't think I'm going to need the, the Shatter Skull Smashing effect. I could cut Glory Ringer for like a Sulfuric Vortex. Um, oh, I like Liliana's Triumph because they're playing Blightsteel Colossus. So if they like through the Breach Blightsteel, I can just have this up as a protection from that. Otherwise, I have like no way to save myself. That seems okay. I mean, maybe I do just cut Glory Ringer in that case. And now I can cut a mountain for a black source. That makes black braids more reliable, more consistent. Because now my deck is much more heavily black. That seems okay. The question is, do I want Midnight Reaper? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to keep the deck like this. It's, this looks like a decent matchup. Man, I wish I had seen any fixing. This hand would be great if I knew I could hit black mana. I think I'm still going to keep. I have Beaumont Courier, Smuggler's Copter, Grim Lava Mancer, and then... They took my card? How rude. Um, and then outs to... Oh, man. Yeah, we're going to Beaumont Courier here. Um, I, I have outs to draw land and start Smuggler's Coptering them. And, like, the Smuggler's Copter can hopefully draw me more lands. Uh, I could also draw Mana Crypt and play Rabble Master on turn two, which would be good. The Knight's Whisper. That's okay. Come on, deck land. Specifically Black Source. Okay. I mean, Red Mana is not the end of the world either. I can play Copter here. And hit them for one again next turn if i draw land it's going to be awesome because then i can rabble master and use the rabble master token to crew the copter but again this this is why i didn't want to put black braids in my deck just because 
if you can't cast it, it doesn't do a whole lot. But against this opponent, they didn't impact the board at all. So even if I do cast like a turn five black braids, it might still be good enough. Ooh, expressive iteration in the cube. That seems fun. I wanted to put this in my vintage cube, but I didn't know how good it would be. So this will be a good like firsthand experience. Because basically, they're digging for lands here is my guess. Um, given how long they're pausing, I guess they probably didn't hit a land. Hard to say. Uh, they exiled. Interesting. So they got rid of Talisman of Indulgence instead of putting it on the bottom. Okay, they play Rite of Flame. Oh, I see. And then they're going to play Talisman. Okay, that actually makes some bit of sense. So now they have a Talisman. So they do, they have impacted the board. Maybe I will bring back a Braid. Um, we're in a bit of trouble, though. We need to land Lightning Bolts. Okay, um, let's go Grim Lava Mancer, Crew the Copter. We might just get Blight Steel Colossus through the Breached. I could hold back two creatures for this, but I don't think that requires like a very specific thing of cards and like they could just have other cards instead of Blight Steel Colossus through the Breach. Let's loot and then exile. Draw a discard. That didn't work out. I could discard this though, I guess. When it falls to 12, I can put them down to nine and then down to seven off burst lightning but i might just die to flight steel colossus here oddly enough getting counters on umazawa's jite would also be useful because i can use that to oh interesting okay yogmos will currently they cannot expressive iteration and knight's whisper so they're just gonna knight's whisper that's pretty sketchy <laughs> it's respectable but you're going pretty low there opponent so they're gonna take three down to seven and then take three more down to four. I mean, maybe they can get there. We're going to bolt their face at end of turn. And then hope to draw a land. Swift Spear. So how much damage can I do here? I can play Swift Spear. And then I can burst lighting their face. That puts them down to five. Uh, Crew Smuggler's Copter with Beaumont, with Grim Lava Mancer. So burst lighting their face down to five. Swift Spear hits them for three. I think they just die. Swift Spear, Burst Lightning U, Crew the Copter here, yeah they die. Sweet, okay. <laughs> I kinda wanna see more of my opponent's deck. Will I even hit a third land? Nope, never hit a third land. Who needs three lands to win a game? Two is just plenty. <laughs> All right, see you guys next round. All right, we're playing against Game and Kid 05. This hand is exceptional, so we're gonna keep we have the old turn one Inquisition, turn two, four one Flying Haste strategy, or turn one Bone Shredder. Uh, but this just enters tapped, right? Yeah. And they Fabled Passage for red. So that tells me they're probably up to some shenanigans. I am just going to Inquisition them. There was some consideration to leading with Swamp if their opponent has like, wait, oh, whoa. Demonic Tutor, Jade Fringe Prodigy, Seasoned Paramancer. So we take Demonic Tutor, then we get to Bone Shredder, Jace. That seems pretty good. Um, there could be something said for taking Season Pyromancer because it will be good on an empty hand, but right now they only have one red and their meta looks sketchy, so I'm not too concerned. So they play Island, Jace. Okay, um, I need to decide if I'm going to Stomp or Bone Shredder. And I think I'm just going to Stomp. Last turn. Bone Shredder I'll save for something bigger and scarier. So they play Dark Slick Swords, which I did not know about. So they have Season Parmancer, Swamp, and One Unknown. Double Blue is marginally scary, but we get to go Swamp, Mana Crypt. And we are limited on red mana. So if they counter Mana Crypt, we can play Bone Crusher. I'm going to play Falcon Wrath because it does the most damage. Start swinging in. Okay, hit them for four. Do they have any plays end of turn? They do not. That's great. Um, we really want to draw a red source, so they drew, they played the Swamp, so they have Seasoned Pyromancer and two unknowns. Hail always fails. Skull Clamp is good. Um, let's attack for four. I can clamp the Aristocrat, but that seems a bit sketchy. Also, Skull Clamp is kind of a weird combo with, uh, <laughs> with Hazard, because you really want to keep it, like, hand size low. Okay, attack for four. Uh, something I could have done is, like, play Hazard and equip Skull Clamp to the Hazard. But I think we're going to go Bone Crusher Giant. I guess I didn't have the mana to play and equip that. Then we can play Skull Clamp and equip to the Giant. They fall. Okay, so they get two things. Toxic Deluge. 
I mean, that helps them kind of. But already they don't have artifacts. Or... This is a good hit. The specific problem with Toxic Deluge is that it kills um, Hazareth, which is my follow-up play. But I'm going to draw a bunch of cards regardless of what they kill. Uh, they can play Duretti and Heartless Act in the same turn. I guess they can also play Toxic Deluge and Heartless Act, like Hold Up Heartless Act. Their hand is Seasoned Primance or One Unknown. Uh, this is quite challenging, actually. Maybe I give them Duretti Toxic Deluge versus Heartless Act in two lands. What happens then? Yeah, that actually seems not too bad. Okay, we'll do that. Because Duretti Toxic Deluge essentially strands the Seasoned Pyromancer in their hand. They do take that. Okay. Yeah, so now they have a bunch of cards. If they have another land and they can like double spell, this is going to be difficult. But if their play this turn is just a Toxic Deluge, that's not too bad for me. They lose two life here. Um, Indestructible does not protect against minus X minus X. So I think I just let that go through. Um, they did have the land to hold up Heartless Act, but that's okay. I did draw a red source, which is good. We get to go Mountain, Hazaret, Whips, Skull Clamp to Hazaret, because they have Duretti, which can not kill my Skull Clamp just yet. And then we have Lightning Bolt at the ready, because if we had played Goblin Rabble Master, they get to use this two man. Oh, they don't have Heartless Act. What am I doing? That's right. I gave them Toxic Deluge Duretti. Oh, that was a mistake. I, for some reason, I thought they had Heartless Act too, but I specifically didn't do that. So they played Duretti. They can make a 1-1. One, one. Um, Bone Shredder cannot kill that. Kind of want to just bolt the Construct here. Play this. Tails never fails. We win again. Okay. Can't complain. Let's go ahead and play the Rabble Man and the Land, and then discard a card for Hazaret. And put my opponent down to two life. Down to one life. And I guess to play around a board wipe, let's skull clamp the goblin token. Or let's skull clamp. Ah, they're at one life. What can they possibly do here? I'm gonna draw a card. No, that prevents Hazard from attacking. We're just gonna we're just gonna let it sit like this. Okay, yeah, they're they're at one life. They need to kill an indestructible hazard in Grixis colors. Um Toxic Deluge is the one I need to worry about specifically. So I think, again, another matchup where Braids is pretty good. Although they have Seasoned Pyromancer, which makes Braids pretty awkward. Yeah. Honestly, I think I'm just going to run it back. Our main deck configuration is great. Oh, uh, this hand's good. It's um not as good like we have, don't have Turn 1 Thoughtseize, but Turn 1 Lightning Bolt, GTA seems pretty decent against, like, Doretti Seasoned Pyromancer nonsense. What is this? Seagate Restoration. Draw cards equals the number of cards in your hand plus one. You have no maximum hand size. I thought LSV really didn't like this card when I saw him talking about it. But everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Oh, the one thing I really want to talk about is the Mirari Conjecture. I was hating on that card. I'm like, this card's not good. I got so many comments saying LSV thinks this card is good, but it's not even in his own vintage queue. <laughs> so clearly he didn't think the card was that great either. So I feel a little bit vindicated on that. Even though I had no question in my mind the card was not great. They have Talisman of Creativity, okay. Um, so now the question is, do I want to play Knight's Whisper or like a Jitae or hold up Stomp? I think I'm just going to play the Jitae. This frees up my hand next turn to be able to go like Knight's Whisper Lightning Bolt or really whatever I want. I can go Bone Treader and then equip Jitae if they play a creature. They just play a land. Yeah, I think Knight's Whisper and Lightning Bolt seems all right. Or Burst Lightning, same thing, yeah. Um, let's go red. Knight's Whisper. I don't have to discard a hand size. If they counter this, I'm fine with that too. Okay, that goes through. I draw a bunch of lands, but I can actually cast an Agadim's Awakening. So I guess I want to start trading off creatures and then just save this to cast. When it stomps my face. Acceptable. So this takes damage, right? Whenever I burn it, it does two damage to me. Not the end of the world. Um, actually, whenever it becomes a target of a spell... So I could just let that go through and I could just Bone Shredder it actually. That seems pretty good. Let's start playing Swamps. Play Bone Shredder. Kill the Giant. I don't take damage. I can even pay to keep Bone Shredder around and then equip Jitae next turn. So this sequencing is actually ending up really good for me. And they have to Kavu my Bone Shredder. Yeah, that's not great for them. So I don't think I want to Burst Lightning because I think I want to go Stomp and then cast Bone Crusher Giant. Ooh, that's pretty good too. So Stomp. 
This is uh, just a lot of two for ones. Flame Tongue Kavu, double Bone Crusher Giant. Oh, I was supposed to play my Black Land. It doesn't matter too much. Um, I want to have more creatures die because right now all my creatures cost three. So, like, getting them back with Akadim's Awakening isn't super exciting or anything. Swamp. So, let's go ahead and go Swamp, Skull Clamp. Equip Skull Clamp. If they don't kill it now, then they Heartless Act, they take two in the process. Okay, go ahead. So, now I need a creature. I can Akadim's Awakening the Bone Crusher Giant if I need to. But every creature I put into play is immediately very scary. Um, Consecrated Sphinx. Ooh, I don't like Demonic Tutor. What do you find in this position? Jace the Mind Sculptor. Dak Faden would be disgusting. Take my Jite or Skull Clamp. That would be bad. So hopefully it's not a Dak Faden. Jace Vryn's Prodigy. Um, I think I'm just going to Agadim's Awakening my Bone Shredder. That seems worth it enough. Womp. Awakening. Bone Shredder. Two, three. One, two, three. If they counter this, like, ooh, okay, that's not good. We get to kill that at least, but mana drain there, <laughs> not exactly what I wanted to see. Um, they get six mana next turn. They only have two cards in hand though, so maybe they don't get to use the six mana on anything. Nice, okay, that was just an effective counter spell. They have three cards in hand, Sedgemore Witch is nice. One, two, three, play the Witch. Whip Skull Clamp to the Witch. They char the Witch. So we turn off auto yields, we make them pay the three life, then we lightning bolt their face to get a token off the witch. And then we get down smuggler's copter now. That way we can start attacking with stuff. Okay, I didn't necessarily want to clamp the pest. If they want to use burn on the pest, they can. Ugh, firebolt hurts. All right, deck, we just need any creature. My opponent's hellbent at eight life. That's better than any creature. That is the creature. <laughs> Hazard's pretty decent. Um, let's just equip everything. You have one card in hand? You die next turn? Alright, see what happens. Man, these cards are so good. <laughs> Poor opponent. I mean, they have to kill Hazard, otherwise I just nug them for two on their upkeep, or my upkeep. Toxic Deluge for three. That's a good way to go out, actually. I respect it. That doesn't even kill her, because I could Umazawa's GTA to pump Hazard up. But <laughs> a respectable amount. See you guys in the finals. All right, we're here in the finals. I don't think we've dropped a game. Playing against Wimpy Bones 1. We are on the play. We got a good hand on the play. This deck is so... I love Black Red as an archetype. I know I'm not really playing with any new cards. Sedgemore Witch seemed fun, though. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm having a good time here. Let's thought seize our opponent. See what they got going on. Oh, boy. Uh... Swords to Plowshares, Lightning Bolt, Vanishing Verse. <laughs> a lot of removal. Needle Spires, Planes are the only two cards. So, oof, what a hand. Um, I guess I get rid of Swords to Plowshares because it's the most efficient card. And it exiles. But that's not great for me. Um, the upside here is that they have nothing proactive going on. I draw a Swamp, so if they don't draw a White Source, they cannot Vanishing Verse my Rebel Man. And maybe they do something else on their turn. So they play Planes. Do I even really want to expose Rebel Man to Lightning Bolts? Ooh, well this works out. I could just play Glorybringer, right? They can't Lightning Bolt my Glorybringer. Okay, <laughs> now they have to draw a Black Source to do anything. Um, Manatide destroys me, but I've seen their hand. Did them for four. Nice Lightning Bolt. Pack them for four. Um, so now the hope is that they tap out and then I can set up like a Rabble Master situation. Because no black mana, like they're playing solidly three colors here. And they need a lot of things to go right. Of course, <laughs> of course they had an untapped black source that lets them Vanishing Verse plus Lightning Bolt. Ugh. Well, that's bad. Maybe they get Greedy and Demonic Tutor though. No. Okay, so Glowbringer down and they have Lightning Bolt ready for my Rabble Man. Yeah, this went from great to pretty bad very quickly. Um, we need a Hazard at the moment. Skyclave? Actually, Skyclave Shade is pretty good too. So, let's play Rebel Man. Skyclave Shade answers their hand quite nicely. They can't exile it anymore. Move to combat. Okay, they kill that um, in my main phase. So I can even just play Skyclave Shade now. Nice. And I'm not going to kick it because they, they have Demonic Tutor for Wrath, but I am going to keep my land in hand. So that I can recast it if they just like play Wrath of God this turn. 
The lightning bolt is gone. They have demonic tutor, wrath of God, one unknown. Is this mind twist? <laughs> okay, they've had uh, they've had it all. Losing Colgon's command was pretty brutal because getting back Goblin Rabble Master post wrath would be good. So their hand is demonic tutor, wrath of God, one unknown. I lose the flip again. Ooh, I do draw Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. That's seven damage to the face. They can't really wrath that one away easily. All right, all right. Top decks are going into my favor now. This has been, my opponent has had just a pile of removal and we are still somehow in this. Come on! Are you kidding me? Holy cow, they've had everything. Um, wow. Uh, do I sacrifice this or do I just take the land? I think my only thing that gets it back is Colgon's command. So I guess I just let this go through. And I'm going to get a Swamp. This lets me Agadim's Awakening if I draw it, I guess. So now Hazard's just an exceptional draw. Same with Skull Clamp, and honestly just lands to like make Skyclave Shade good. Okay, opponent's Demonic Tutoring. So they're not going to be... I guess they could still Wrath this turn. Um, we'll see. If they grab like Nahiri and exile my Skyclave Shade, that's going to be just disgusting. And there's not much I can do about that. Except... Still top decking Hazard can get me out of this, surprisingly enough. But look, look at this pile of just obscene removal. Okay, but my opponent is tanking for a while, so maybe... I'm trying to think what would be the... Like, any Planeswalker would be really brutal here. Like, Gideon would be bad. Just, yeah, any Planeswalker would be bad. But the hope is that they just have removal. And then Skyclave Shade can get there, and maybe I win a Mana Crypt flip at some point. Nope. Who would even win a Mana Crypt flip? So let's attack for three and see what happens. So I can't play Sedgemore Witch because that just runs right into Wrath of God. Opponent plays Worm Coil Engine. That's a pretty good thing to tutor for. All right, can I win a flip? No, I will lose every single flip in a row. <laughs> um, do I have any hope of winning this? No, I don't really want to show them more of my deck. They're, they're just going to hit me with Worm Coil and then I lose. All right, we have dropped a game. Against the mono removal worm coil deck, what do I like? Uh, Avalanche Rider seems awesome. Trying to Burning Rage seems actually hard for them to deal with. Potentially, same with Sulfuric Vortex. Just moving towards more like permanent base. I guess they can exile Vortex, but they have so much creature exile that, like, if I play Falcon Rather Aristocrat or Glorybringer and they exile it for one mana, that's just not great for me. They're bringing like Char. Um, I don't think it's worth having. Oh, they're not really damaging me. Like, I only lost that game because of weird top decks. Not necessarily because I damaged myself. Although, <laughs> Mana Crypt did do, like, 16 damage to me or whatever. I think I bring in Figure of Destiny and we just go faster than them. We reduce the amount of black in our deck. Let's get some red. I'm guessing at this point, honestly, we probably want Light Up the Stage. Uh, Bone Shredder seems a bit awkward. Agadim's Awakening, I don't think I'm casting. Well, it's a land, right? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. So this is 15 land, so I need to add another... No, yeah, we're running 16 with Mana Crypt. Um, what else am I cutting? Like, all of these are quite good. Mind Twist gets me out of this. I almost want to cut Skull Clamp because they just have so much removal. Oh, Gite. Gite is not great in this matchup. Um, I like Sedgemore Witch. I mean, all the rest of the cards are good, so coming up with cuts is actually really hard. Mm, one crusher costs two. K command is a good two for one, but they have so much exile. I think K command is still worth keeping. Uh, this is really hard. I guess Mesmeric Fiend doesn't do a whole lot. I just want aggressive creatures, and then we're running out of time. Char is four to the face. I like that. Uh, what do I cut? What do I cut? Help! <laughs> I don't know what to get rid of. Inquisition, Thoughtseize. I don't know. I'm getting rid of Char. I don't think that's correct. I didn't have enough time to think about what I actually wanted. But we're on the play. Much more aggressive this time. I'll keep this hand. Uh, do I want to save Inquisition? I think so. I think I want to get down a figure because I go turn one figure, turn two figure level up plus Inquisition, or I can save Inquisition post Sedgemore Witch. Both are good options. They can sort my... Oh gosh. Never mind, I'm supposed to take the Mox Jet. I don't think I'm winning this matchup. Their hand, their deck is absolutely insane. They have Valky? Oh my gosh. All right. And they get to get a Sedge... <laughs> this went so badly. So badly. 
Because they get to get a Sedgemore Witch, and then like their deck is absurd with Sedgemore Witch. <laughs> if I had just Inquisitioned, I take their Mox Jet. There's no way of knowing. I think almost always this is a better line because I'm hitting for two on turn two instead of turn three. Like I'm just hitting them for one more like damage faster. The, like it would have to be specifically Mox Jet into Valky for this line to work out. And maybe they take Avalanche Riders too because they're weak to it. Um, I do also have a lot of burn that can kill Valky, right? Become a copy. Yep, they take the witch. All right, deck, please. Because they just need one land. Okay, never mind. We're good. Bolt that. Play land. Make this a 2 2. Okay, this worked out. Back here. So next turn, we can play Agadim's Awakening into the witch or into Inquisition. Or if we draw a mountain, we can just make Figure of Destiny into a 4 4. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you can mind twist my two good cards. Oh, jeez. We have no hope. Red source? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's not even... I can't even complain. My opponent's had it every single turn. Like, I think literally every single turn. Yep. Um, A swamp could... Like, I'm not out of this game. A swamp could bring me back into it. A mountain, a little bit late. But, like, if we get to Avalanche Riders, there are planes and... Then we Knight's Whisper into Colgon's Command or something. <sighs> oh. Oh. It's still winnable. That's the beautiful part about this game. Okay, there's the Swamp. We do this. They don't have a plane. They do still get Lingering Souls. But I'm going to hold back the Riders to trade off with the Chupacabra. They have a Planes in hand. Okay. We take the damage. I think I pay the Echo, but it's hard to say. Flashback Lingering Souls. I think I do pay the Echo. Ooh, Parmancer is actually a decent answer. So we play this, we're going to block the Chupacabra with it. We take four in the air, we need to draw quite a bit of removal in a row, because we also have to, like, play Knight's Whisper here. I block. Yeah, we were actually still close to winning this somehow, even though they mind-twisted all the good stuff. There's a Swamp, so... Swamp, Young Pyromancer, Inquisition them. Lightning Bolt? Oh, they don't have red mana. Nice, okay. Um, I guess I get rid of Colgon's Command, because that one is much better than Lightning Bolt. So they have Batter Skull, Wrath of God, Night's Whisper, <laughs> Sulfuric Vortex. Okay, we have Skull Clamp, though. They can't cast anything in their hand. They hit me for four. I cannot play Sulfuric Vortex for sure. Well, go to six. Yeah, I definitely cannot play Sulfuric Vortex. Did they draw something? Foretell. Oh, they have Doomscar, maybe? I don't know. I don't know the list of foretell cards. Burst lightning is huge. I think one, two, three, four. Plus four is eight. Um, we definitely start by attacking. That's definitely what happens here. So they have outer skull, lightning bolt, wrath of god. So if they draw a red source, I'm just dead to lightning bolt. Um, I can burst lightning with kicker to put them down to eight, and then they take one, two, three, four, five. Six seven. So I would need to draw a spell. So I think our better option here is to go skull clamp, equip an elemental. Kind of burning rage. Um this is a very interesting turn. If I can kill like basically I have so much card draw here that I think I might just be better off targeting the spirits. Let's clamp another elemental. Hazard. <laughs> not not really what you want to draw. All right, let's go Shrine. And I think I do like Burst Lightning in a Spirit. I don't know. I'm trying to play the long game here. But that might not have been advisable. All right, I die. They just bolt my face. Ugh. Very, very intense series of games. My opponent's deck was sweet. Uh, we could have... I don't know if there's anything I could have done. Right, if they have K Command, they still destroy me. I don't die instantly, but it's still really bad. Yeah, good games opponent. Your deck was sweet. You drew everything. <laughs> so did I though. Like my, my hand and deck was very good. Um, I did get to assemble the young Pyromancer Skull Clamp combo. So I have no regrets. I want to see my deck. How do I do that? Here, the previous deck. Um, yeah, this deck was, I think, exceptional. Uh, I have no complaints. Just <laughs> it can't beat the nut draw with the timely mind twists when they needed it. Uh, actually, my only complaint is that I couldn't main deck Black Braids. With um, better mana, obviously it would be good. 
Valkyrath Aristocrat felt pretty good. Not incredible. Um, I kind of want a lot out of my 4 drops. But it is good in some matchups. The Indestructible is very relevant. Yeah, sweet deck. See you guys next time.